So welcome. Uh, <laughs> this this is the story I'm gonna I'm gonna try to uh, tell you tonight or the, this afternoon. And, uh, and first of all, thank you for inviting me here uh, to talk about these in top, uh, very important topics. Um, I'm, I'm going to share a sto this story about Öppna School Platform, and uh, it's easier to pronounce Open School Platform. Um, and, uh, but, um, yeah, so, but before doing that, I'm, I just want to share a few words about Sweden's self-perception. Um, in, in, in Sweden, we, we have uh, one of the oldest laws, I think it's the oldest laws for public access to open inf information and security. It's, uh, it was founded 200, more than 250 years ago. Uh, so we are very proud of, of being an open society uh, and have always been. Um, and uh, our aim and our self-perception is that we also are one of the best country in, countries in making use of digitalization. Um, and uh, hopefully, you, I will share you a story that proves this wrong. Uh, and uh, many times when Swedes are on vacation, we, we, are, we are saying, in Sweden we have a system, we like our, uh, our assistance, we are, meaning we are fucking great. <laughs> um, but are we? Uh, so I'm going to share this story. It starts uh, 2013, uh, where the city of Stockholm decided to, to procure a system for, for all the schools in, in the Stockholm region. Uh, so, and, and, and the idea was very ambitious, uh, and the idea was to have one system that could help all the teachers, all the students, and all the parents to communicate and make use of digitalization in the best way. Uh, they, they did everything in the old way, so they uh, made a, a huge uh, pre-study, asked a lot of teachers and, all, all, uh, and a lot of parents and the students as well to try to, to figure out all the detailed uh, uh, demands that everyone has. So the goal was to have the best school in the world at making use of digitalization, which is uh, from itself a kind of weird <laughs> goal for a project. Um, not to have the best school, but <coughs> somehow they, it, was, it was a lot of, um, a lot of prestige in using digitalization as well uh, from the beginning. So uh, one year after that, um, they, the procurement was, was uh, finished. Uh, now the font size has shifted. The, so this is uh, the 30 uh, million euros was allotted for this project, which is a, a huge project in any sense. Um, and uh, they chose Tedo, uh, which is one of the biggest consultancy companies in Sweden. Um, and uh, they, they also chose Microsoft as the, the platform for, for, this, uh, for this big project. Uh, two years after this, they, un they realized that this, is not, this huge amount of money is not going to be enough, so they allotted more money, so now they are up in 50 uh, million euros. Uh, and, and, and the time frame is also supposed to shift a little bit as well. Uh, now, four years after that, um, it, it's up in 70 uh, million euros. And at this point, the, this project is, uh, costs as much as uh, the whole v Wikipedia. Or, uh, so th that's, uh, and uh, of course, at this point, this become a laughing stock uh, at everyone in the tech business because as you might know, we have, we have a, a lot of tech startups in Stockholm and in Sweden, we, which we are very proud of, but it's a very different story when it comes to public digitalization. And a few more years pass by, uh, and, and the, the system is now launched, uh, but the launch goes terribly bad. It directly realizes that uh, just by changing a few parameters in some of the URLs, you're, al you're allowed to see other uh, students' uh, grades and uh, information, uh, which means that they have to shut the whole thing down for two months to fix all the security issues. And the, the user interface 
it was not tested on real users when they launched. So, of course, it didn't work as expected. And they, they also hadn't tested this on, on more than a few people at the same time. So it was, it was very, very slow. Uh, so this hugely expensive project that has been uh, continued for more years and years and just continued to cost a lot of money was pretty much a failure. Um, and uh, CETA Stockholm was actually the first public uh, organization fined with the G GDPR laws with uh, 400,000 euros uh, in, in fines. So uh, a few years after that, 2020, uh, now ha it has passed uh, 1 billion uh, Swedish crowns, uh, 100 million uh, euros. Um, so um, this was a disaster. And, and on App Store, because this app uh, could also be reviewed on App Store, and uh, uh, these were some of the, uh, <laughs> some of the re reviews. It basically said that it was created by orangutan. Uh, if, <laughs> uh, it's worse than Corona. Uh, it, it gets me to regret that I, get, uh, I have kids. Uh, it's a portal to another dimension. Uh, you get stomach ache from, from using this. It's a labyrinth. So uh, this, was, this was actually, I have three kids. I have a parent and I'm a divorced dad. So uh, I decided that we, we should be able to do something about this. We can't really just only complain. Um, so, and I'm 100% I'm dependent on this school platform because that's the only, f because in order for, for, for people to start using this, they enforce the, the teachers to only publish information in this, this uh, hugely disappointing, very costly pl platform. Uh, so I was 100% uh, dependent on getting information about uh, my kids, uh, their homework and their schedules and things like uh, if they're going to uh, have their gym bag to school this day. Uh, so, and, uh, but luckily for from, from me, I'm a programmer since I was eight uh, and I'm an entrepreneur uh, and I, I run a tech company in, in Stockholm. So I decided to, to first of all, uh, start, start a little bit of a revolution. So I bought this hat and published on Twitter. Uh, it basically says, uh, uh, throw away this school platform. For, because for me and for a lot of the teachers, uh, it would actually be better if they uh, reverted back to using emails instead of using this. Um, so what I did was to press F12 in your, you know, on, on my keyboard. Uh, if you haven't done this yourself, you can, you can have a lot of fun using this because this is the magic key to finding out what the data is going back and forth between your computer and the school system. And what I found was that there was calls to some sort of hidden API saying get texts and get calendar and get news and get... Uh, um, uh, uh, yes, the notifications and like, things like this. So what I did was to uh, publish an API where I took all these, these uh, hidden APIs that the city was using and created my own uh, sensible API that everyone could use to start building new things on top of the school platform. I published this on, uh, on uh, GitHub. And, uh, and then published this uh, repository to Quadopor, which is one of the biggest uh, Facebook groups in Sweden with uh, pretty much all developers in, in that group, which directly meant that uh, some of the best programmers in, in Sweden and uh, also teachers uh, and, uh, were, were uh, now engaged in, in creating something on top of this school platform. And at this point, everything was run from my uh, basement in, on my Mac Mini. Uh, but we realized quite quickly that this is not going to be suitable uh, to have all the information uh, running from, from, all the, from the, all the parents in Stockholm running through my basement. So what we did, and this was re really important, uh, we moved the whole API inside of the app. So now we had one app that could co talk directly to the school platform and, and uh, make use of the information, but present it in a much easier way. Which meant that uh, now we had uh, the basic foundation for releasing. So now we had our own app that was using the same information that uh, the school platform contained, but it was presented in a much easier way, so everyone could start using it. Uh, 
But now uh, the media started picking up on, on our, uh, on our uh, journey and our uh, idea to, to release something new, uh, which meant that, uh, uh, yeah, and at this point, everyone could be really happy. The school could have contacted us and said, yeah, you have, you have solved our problem. We can, we can now go home and, and uh, co collaborate together to, to make, make this better. But that was not what, ha what happened. Um, so before even we had launched, uh, they went out in media uh, saying this, this, uh, uh, this app could be illegal. And, uh, so, and this was in, in public news in Sweden that the, the city of Stockholm, uh, they pretty much said that um, you can't expect someone, a private person, to, to change the course of this huge investment that we have done. Uh, so, but we, we launched anyway, uh, and now instead of 1.1 stars, we got 4.9 stars in App Store, uh, and it was the number uh, one app in Sweden, uh, and everyone was really, really happy, because this actually solved uh, their problems, as, uh, at least from the parents' perspective. Uh, so, and, the, and from this point on, everything seemed, seemed uh, great, so the city of Stockholm contacted us and uh, wanted to meet, but uh, instead of collaboration, they started sabotaging. Uh, so, they, they sh changed their parameters uh, and made small changes to their hidden API, uh, which meant that our app started, uh, it stopped working. Uh, but just a few hours later, uh, our developers uh, issued some fixes and uh, everything was, uh, was uh, back again. Then they tried to threaten us with censorship. So they didn't like the user participation uh, of the open source uh, part of this. They were threatened by this. So they thought that because we published their hidden APIs, uh, some information that is available for everyone if they just press the F12 key on their keyboard, uh, they, uh, they wanted us to take the whole thing down. Uh, and remember that we have the, one of the strongest laws uh, from uh, open participation and privacy in Sweden. So this uh, threat is actually illegal. Uh, they tried to bury us in paperwork whenever we wanted to get information from the city. Uh, and finally, they, start, they called the cops. Uh, so a journalist called me uh, an afternoon on Wednesday saying that we, are now, uh, we have now been uh, charged with police charges. Uh, but pretty soon, the police uh, dropped the charges, uh, saying that this, the city already have information that this app is actually legal, depending on their own investigation which uh, led to inf that the information about uh, uh, of, uh, they had, it turned out that they had uh, already in February uh, made an internal investigation that fully acquitted us, so, which means that they already knew before going about all these sabotages, censorships and obstruction of justice, they already knew that this app is actually legal. So this is about something else. They were threatened about, about this, uh, this open source movement that we had started. Um, so, but the last step was to try to acquire us and shut us down. Uh, so they, they went out in media and said that they're going to they're gonna pay us money. Uh, and then when we, uh, when we said, OK, let's, uh, let's hear what you want to, want, want to do, we realized that they're not interested in uh, buying this and continuing, continuing on. They are just wanted to buy this and, and uh, shut it down. So, but we didn't buy it. But instead, uh, we, we started a movement. Yeah. And uh, the, the whole project now had become so famous in Sweden, both because of the original project is uh, such a disaster, but also because all of these back and forth between us and them, the small kids, or the small, not kids, but the parents that just want our information presented in a better way, uh, getting police, uh, uh, called, uh, police report uh, on us. Uh, a lot of, lot of discussion now started in Sweden about the use of, of APIs, the use of open source, and, and the, the different parties, and what, what information 
can you expect uh, from the government and what the roles are uh, in regards to uh, innovation? Uh, should, should the public organizations be responsible both for the data and for the innovation on top of the data or should there be a divide between these? So a lot of really, really good discussions uh, came out from, from this uh, particular example. So we uh, started an API award uh, and, and, uh, and also uh, eight pages uh, uh, article in, in, the, in Wired tech, uh, tech News. And also a uh, personal favorite of mine, Cory Doctorow, wrote a really long piece about this, this link between APIs and open source and, and uh, how, how the city was using privacy as a mean for, for shutting down us, because that was uh, pretty much their, their, uh, their case. And he called it uh, privacy, privacy washing, which is an, also an interesting term. Uh, so what happens now? We are now expanding to more cities. Uh, as you remember, the, the API that we built were implemented into the app, which meant that we can build a new kind of adapters and keep the app intact. So the app and the, the small adapter can now be used in other cities. So now we are both in Stockholm and in Gothenburg and new, other cities are also building new adapters. And a lot of developers in Sweden are interested in participating in, in this project. Uh, the app is now t uh, translated to 12 languages, including Spanish, so, and, but not Catalan. So if you're interested in changing or participating in this, you can very easily just go to our GitHub page and, and translate the app to your language. But also, more importantly, this app can also be used as a layer on top of other uh, school systems. So if you want to participate here, in Barcelona or in Spain, you can just take the source code and release a new app and, the, and everything is already in place. So the only thing you need to do is to the, create this small adapter that, change, that takes the information from your school system and then publish it that in the same API or the same format that the app uses. And that way you can also start building a, a new uh, participatory open sourced uh, uh, platform for parents in this case, but also for, uh, for teachers but also, and also for, for uh, students later on. Uh, and now, right now we are working on the app for students, which is using the same principles. Um, and uh, maybe uh, the first, first new app uh, outside Sweden might be in Spain, who knows. <laughs> uh, and the open source uh, moves the power uh, to us, the people. And I think this is really, really the most important part of this story, that they didn't win, we won, and you are allowed to, from, the, from these uh, laws that we have, the previous laws and the open transparency laws that we have, especially in Sweden, but also in other countries, you are entitled to, get, uh, to show your information in any way you want. You're not restricted in showing it in the, in the way that the, the government has decided. Because, and, and as soon as someone says, we, we are striving for a smart city, what I'm thinking is that we are striving for a dumb city. Uh, because if we have a dumb city that just keeps the data very, very, very boringly in APIs, then we can have a smart uh, market and a smart city growing and uh, developing through the means of open source and collaboration outside which means that we are, we are also dividing this power a little bit better, uh, rather than just keeping everything uh, at the place where, the, the, where it's the hardest to, to maintain a good level of inno innovation, with meaning uh, the public, uh, public, public organizations. So uh, to conclude, my final reflections are that now, uh, if we can start seeing this open source uh, an open movement and start envision, especially here in Europe, where we kind of are, we don't have these huge corporations that are centralized and that, can, that we can rely on, but can we start using this new uh, open uh, revolution, if you would say, as a means for us Europeans to find our own way and define a new way of, of uh, keeping the d democracy and the, the human rights and adapt them into the digital world and be as uh, uh, diverse as we are, as different countries with different uh, 
uh, ways of living. Um, and also, open source is not about technology. Uh, it's about uh, collaboration uh, and, and distribution of power. And I, I mentioned, uh, I heard one question about uh, if is the problem that open source is free? Uh, and I, I think this is a re really important question. Uh, our app actually is not free. It costs one euro to, for each parent, which is enough for us to, to be able to pay for some of the contributions uh, that we need sometimes when we when we have things that we need to do. For example, in our case, we had, to, we had a lot of legal issues, so we had to pay lawyers to, to keep track on this. Uh, and I think that if we always think of open source as, as, as free uh, and not cost money, I think we are end, ending in a different path. But if you can see that the, the open source is about free, in the same way as in speech, not as in free beer. Um, Another reflection is privacy by design. Uh, by using this method that we have, we are moving the logic uh, of this app into the client side, which means that we l have less complexity of keeping, uh, we are keeping the data outside of, of us uh, that creates the app. We don't see any data, which means that it's privacy by design. Uh, another reflection is, uh, shouldn't big municipalities as, as Stockholm uh, be responsible for setting the standard for the, for the smaller uh, municipalities? Uh, and also uh, same with different countries. When, when you are in power of, of uh, spending this amount of money, aren't you supposed to also make it in available so, so smaller uh, municipalities also can uh, take part of, of your investments? And also the third and uh, the last uh, reflection is about standards. A lot of the time people talk about standards and think about huge meetings where you decide on all these different things. And I don't think that ever works. Internet wasn't created that way. Internet was created by uh, nerds having one idea and putting it out there with an RFC and then started creating something. And then someone else started adapting it and the standard became de facto standard after a while. And this, is, this might be the same in EdTech. Maybe you don't need all these uh, standards for, uh, up front, but if you have an open collaborative way of, of setting these standards, maybe you are able to do that. And, uh, and, uh, and also, if you are interested, um, uh, please join the, this uh, collaboration that we have. Uh, and, if something is bad, maybe you can do something about it. That, that is my, my uh, yeah, message back to all of you. Uh, and in our digital world, should be designed by all of us, not just a few. So join us on the Öppna Skolplattform and Öppna Skolplatt. This is not uh, very <laughs> adapted to an international uh, crowd, so maybe we should change names sometime. But thank you so much. <laughs> thank you.